So the first thing you should do is check the wiring of the load cells. So you have your four corners, each with their own load cells. The feet will screw in. So make sure the feet are attached and what it screws into is the load cell. So you should find the plate with two screws. This is a two foot by two foot, but you can find four foot by four foot, five foot by five foot, they all work the same. First, you unscrew these two screws and remove the plate. So you notice that I removed the two screws from the plate, lift the plate up, and inside, you'll notice a junction box. This is the overhead view of how this compartment looks like. You'll notice you'll see a junction box. You'll see four black cables, one for each load cell, and the gray cable that comes out of it. That is for your connector that connects to your 902 indicator or OP900 indicator. Now that you're at the junction box, you'll notice there's four screws. We're gonna now check the wiring by removing these screws. You'll notice how the junction box, I remove the four screws. It is not important if you have four connectors total or six or nine. The junction box should unscrew and should be able to remove the plate. And you should see this green board called the J card. You have checked that all the wiring is correct. These are four for each load cell in each corner. And the fifth one will be that goes to the indicator. Now we'll check the wiring. Notice you have five cables on each one. These are a set of five cables. So the red one is excitation positive, delivering the power. Black is ground. The green cable signal positive, the white cable is the signal negative, and the white, clear, or yellow, in this case this one's yellow, this one is white, clear, this would be the shield cable. So now gently tug on each cable, one by one, and make sure there's no loose cables. You'll now do this for all four of these for each corner of the load cell. And this was the home run cable that goes to your indicator. You'll check this one as well and make sure none of these are loose. It'll be the same, excitation positive, black is ground, green signal negative, positive, white is signal negative, and yellow is a shield. If you do notice one of the cables is loose, you will have to get a mini flathead screwdriver and make sure the wire is all the way in screwing. So this would be an example of a loose cable. This could cause an unstable weight. So you gotta make sure it's in the proper slot. This one says shield and you plug it in. This is a closer look on the markings on the J card itself. So you'll notice the clear has shield, the white will have signal negative, green signal positive, the black will be excitation or EX negative, and the red will be EX positive. Make sure they're all in the correct order for every single one. So you notice that if one of your cables is loose, you put it in the hole and make sure that it's all the way loose. I'm trying to plug it in. Make sure you loosen it, tightening counterclockwise. Make sure the cable is all the way in where the metal, it's not sticking out. And then you will turn the screw clockwise to tighten the cable. Don't force it, just go gently with a screwdriver. Eventually you'll notice it won't turn anymore. This is an example of a load cell that's inside a floor scale. It could be different capacities, depending on what floor scale you have, what size. And you'll see the cables on the end. They'll be red, green, white, black, and clear yellow cable. So we'll be testing with a multimeter. So all you'll need for this is a multimeter or maybe also a small flathead screwdriver. So if you have floor scale, for example, you'll be unscrewing the cables in the junction box and remove the green, red, black, white cables. And that, this is the, what I showed you previously would be an example of a load cell. So you remove the cables 
and with your multimeter you now turn it on and set it to ohms resistance so now we'll be checking the resistance across the load cell itself so this is my load cell i'm going to put it down but if you have a floor scale you will just unscrew the cables get your green cable and take one end of your multimeter and hold it against the green cable this is my green cable hold down the green cable and take the other end and put lace it on the red end and if possible you'll be able to see the current ohm resistance is currently at 292-293 ohms resistance You should see it as a 292 293 ohms resistance. So now you'll take, you leave your one end of the multimeter on the green and take the other end and place it on the black and get the reading. So this was at 293 for green to black and previously was from green to red was 293. So if your load cell is less than 5 ohms difference, then your load cell is fine. Certain load cells might be able to tolerate 10 ohms, but once you get past that, you'll notice that your load cell will not be reading correctly. You might have underload or overload. And if you find that this number is very big difference, that it could be shorted in a damaged load cell in your floor scale. Uh, for your floor scale, you'll be testing all the load cells, all four in each corner. If you have weigh beams, you'll test each corner as well. And if you have a hanging scale, you only have one load cell to test. So you do the same test, one end of the multimeter on green, the other end on red, and you'll get the ohm resistance. So you have tested the wiring inside the floor scale and there's no loose cables. Now we'll try the corner test. So turn your indicator on and grab a weight. It could be any weight, but the more the better. And now place the weight on the corner so this is my upper left corner and you can see it's 22 pound weight that's good now take your weight and place it on another corner upper right corner right down so upper left corner upper right corner this is how much weight it showed up upper right corner this much weight lower right lower left but see my upper right shows up 22 pounds take my weight place it on a different corner now now it's the bottom right and I see my weight is 22 pounds that's correct and move my weight to the bottom left and for me it's 22 pounds so this shows that my scale is now reading correctly I can place the weight in the middle And the weight is still correct. And I remove the weight, go back to zero. That's good. So if you notice one of your corners was incorrect, where maybe this one was 22 and the top right was 22, bottom right was 18, bottom left was 2, you know that your bottom left load cell is wrong. Either the cable that goes into the junction box was wired wrong or the load cell itself is bad and needs to be replaced. So at least you know what direction to head in. So if you know if it was your lower left or upper right, whatever corner it was, follow the cable to the plate and go inside the junction box and follow that cable. Make sure the wiring is correct. If the wiring is correct, then you need to test the load cell to see if it's bad. You can always call support or email support at optimascale.com and we could walk you through the steps of testing your load cell to see if it is bad. In that case, you just have to replace the load cell and put a new one. This applies to a 2x2 floor scale, a 4x4, 5x5, it could be any size. But the floor scale will always act the same with floor load cells in each corner and the feet will screw in and all the have a plate where all the wires meet up.